What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to add a calculated field to our model for our app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add a calculated field. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. And remember that price is going up to almost $300 in the new year. So if you want that special $49 price, you only have a couple of more days to take advantage of it. So jump on that now. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna add a calculated field to our model. So here we have our events page and we have calculated there are three days until this event. We're gonna do this all programmatically using the models.py file. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And I am back from vacation. We got back two days ago, but yesterday I slept all day because I needed a vacation from my vacation. You know how that goes. Exhausting, but fun. And uh, let's get back into it. So I'm gonna head over to my events directory and let's come down to our models.py file. And let's come down here and look at our event. So remember when we created our event, we have an event date. So if we want to calculate anything based on that date, like, hey, has the event already occurred? Is it in the future? Is it in the past? How many days is it till the event? We can do that by creating our own little calculated field. And what we're going to do is you might think we would add another field just right here and then just add it to the database. But that wouldn't really work because if you think about it every day, that field would change and the, the database itself wouldn't really update itself every day, it would just have, you know, whatever the days were when we first put it in there. If it was 50 days till the event, it would always say 50, even though time is moving because the database doesn't know time is moving. So we need to do something else. We're going to create a calculated field and we're going to use that and we're going to do that using the property decorator. So let's come down here in our events class and let's just create this. Let's go at property. And when I hit enter and sublime, boom, it pops this right up for me. And for some reason it added a, an underscore there. So I'll take that off. And so let's name this thing. So um, we can call it anything we want. I'm just going to call it days till, right? And then we want to return anything, right? So if we wanted to, we could just return 41, say 41 days till, right? That's obviously not correct, but just to see if this works, we can do this. So really that's kind of all there is to it. So if we save this file now let's head back over to our templates, in our events and let's find the page that lists all the events. So let's see, ba, 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 event list. First of all, let's look at our app. So let's come back over here and here's our app and you can see all of these are past. So I'm gonna edit one of these. Let me log in here real quick and uh, change the date on some of these. So let's go to events, all events. And this one, City Park, it's in January 1st, 2021. That was last year. So let me update this and switch this to Jan to 22 and then click update. And then we ordered these by date. So it's all the way down here. First off, let's change the ordering of this. So this one comes first, just so it's easier. So let's head over to reviews.py file real quick. And let's search for all events. And here is where we're querying the database and we wanna order by event date. Let's order this by negative event date. Come back here, hit reload. Okay, so now this one is listed first. And you can see it's not showing up here. There's nothing on this page. So we have to modify the actual code in our template. So let's head back over here. And so let's go to our event list page. And inside of here, let's add another field here. So let's say days till event. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, reload, make sure that's in there. Okay, we're in the right spot. There it is, days till event. And now we could just pass in that calculated field. We could go event dot, and to call this, we just call the name of this function, days till. So we come back over here and pop that in, event dot days till, save this, head back over to the website. Hopefully now it will say 41 on all of these, and it does, 41. Very cool. So that's how you can create a little something on the back end, pass it in in your models.py file. Very cool, but you know, hey, 41 is not the correct date <laughs> until these events. So let's come back here and let's actually build this thing out. Let's, so let's head back over to our models.py file and we're going to use date time. So let's import that. So let's go from date time. We want to import date. 
So now we can use the date stuff, right, to make our calculations. So let's come down here and let's say days underscore till, let's create a variable. And that's just gonna be self dot event underscore date dot date. So this event underscore date is just this event underscore date. And you'll remember it returns the date and the time. If we come back over here and look, it's got this January 21st midnight, midnight, uh, 10 a.m. So we just, we don't want the time, we just want the date, right? So that will return event underscore date dot date, right? So if we wanted to, we could see what this is. So let's just repass in days underscore till. Now when we call this, it will return this, which is just the event date dot date. So let's save that and look and see what that looks like. Hit reload here. You can see it's just returning the date, right? It's this first part, it's left off this, right? So now we can take the current date and compare it to this because they're the same thing. They both don't have times, right? And we should be able to just do some math, right? So we could say today and set that equal to date dot today, right? And now let's just do some math. We could say whenever the event's date is minus today, and I kid you not, it's just that easy. It will return how many days till. So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, hopefully that worked. And it does. This is three days till zero, 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 zero. This is the time, right? So that, that's okay. You can see this one is negative 34 days. It was a month ago. This one was 95 days ago because you can see it's negative 250 days ago, right? So interesting. Uh, but if we wanted to get rid of this, we could strip this out a number of ways. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's create another variable called days underscore till underscore stripped and set that equal to a string of this because this right here is a date time, right? It's not a string. We can strip things from strings. We can't strip things from date times. So we want to convert this to a string, right? And then we can split out anything we want. So let's go split. And what do we want to split? We want to split the comma from the comma and everything. And then we just want to return the zeroth item of that split object, I guess you would call it or whatever. Right? So let's go ahead and save this. And that should split from there forward or from there back, actually, whatever, however you want to think of it, and just return the number of days. So you can see this comma right here, that's the comma I'm talking about. We're going to split it on that comma. So instead of then returning days till, we want to return days till stripped. We can do that. Go ahead and save this. Head back over here. Hit reload. Boom. Now just this days till event, three days, negative 34 days, negative 95 days. And that's it. So that's how you do calculated fields. Very, very simple. Very, very powerful. Like you could do all kinds of fun stuff with this, right? If we wanted to create another one, we could say, you know, at property define, let's say is past, right? Again, let's copy today's date. Let's say if self dot event underscore date dot date uh, is greater than today, then thing is past else thing is future. I don't know. And then we could just return thing, right? So now we can take this back over to our view back over to our event list. And we can create another one. And let's call this what occurred. <laughs> right? And then we could just pass in event dot is passed. Save this come back over here. And we can say this one's past this one's future. Well, oh, that's the absolute wrong way, isn't it? Oh, we did it backwards. Uh, so let's go less than that. There we go. So now we come back over here. This one's in the future. This one is already passed. This one is already passed. All of these have already passed, right? So all kinds of cool stuff you could do with this. And it's just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.